If, like me, you're a fan of the Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro, you may remember this iconic scene. But have you ever looked at it and thought, wow, I really need to make a book out of this? Well. So, how did a pile of paper and some watercolor paints turn into a tunnel book? The first step is, of course, to gather some of your favorite soft friends. Here we have the magnificent Totoro, the cloud-like Lin, and the nameless bunny who is also very, very soft. Before we begin, I have to thank Totoro for making me practice piano again, because it has been a hot sec. <laughs> Stay tuned till the end if you want to see some more very extra and dramatic lighting shots featuring a piano cover of Path of the Wind. Cool. So now I'm painting one panel of my tunnel book, which will be the second one from the front. Basically, I took my reference image and split it into a foreground, midground, and background. I was actually planning to use a different image for this book. But when I saw that yawn with the perfect subdivision of front, middle, and back, I had to seize the opportunity. And I'll be making four layers total, but I've seen really beautiful tunnel books with many more. If you're interested in making your own, I'll leave a PDF of instructions in the description box. Definitely the hardest part of this panel was painting May's face. I don't have a ton of experience painting people, so that was already nerve-wracking. And then the little baby hairs, the delicate eyebrows, and the nigh invisible eyelids. I definitely heaved a sigh of relief when it was over, but May is so cute that it makes up for it. Next is the foreground, which is teeth. Seriously, Totoro has some gnarly teeth. This section was simpler to paint, but to spice up your viewing experience, I'll employ some time jumps. And while we're here, let's chat about some of our favorite Ghibli movies. Personally, Spirited Away is still my number one because of the pure magic packed into Chihiro's world and the spirit world she enters. I think it's the first Ghibli film I've ever watched, and my first viewing was in Chinese, so I only understood like half of what the characters were saying. But the visuals and the story are just so stunning, and I keep on coming back to it. And now I have watched it. Well, in Japanese, but English subtitles. And of course, My Neighbor Totoro is also one of my favorites, and just has such wholesome vibes. All I've ever wanted was my own Tonare no Totoro, and to grow trees and go on exciting adventures together, and to ride the cat bus. I love the cat bus. And it's hard to pick a specific order, but other top films for me are Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, and Cats on the Sky. And if you're watching this video, I'm thinking you may have seen some of these films as well. So I'd love to know which ones are your favorites, if you can bear to pick just a few. To the background. This section was fun to paint, although also challenging in that I had to mix two reference images together to fill the whole page, along with a healthy splash of making things up. Since Mei sitting on Totoro's fluffy belly is blocking the bottom half, I know that most of this panel won't be visible in the final book. 
but I wanted to paint it anyway, just for fun and in case anyone wants to view my book from the top or bottom. Doing this also really made me appreciate the artwork in my new Rototoro. Even the backgrounds are so richly painted and full of details. Little ferns, curling leaves, and delicate flowers. The ferns were the hardest since with watercolors it's hard to paint light on top of dark, so I ended up with some fern-like plants of my own creation. And many hours later, at least for me, we're on to the actual assembly of the tunnel book. The first part is of course to cut out the panels, starting from the background, which was the easiest. Two straight cuts. Mei and Totoro were a little harder because the pattern was more intricate, especially when we got to Mei's hair, but a combination of X-Acto knife and scissors did the trick, and I did the same for Totoro's teeth. These panels are put together through accordion folds, which are basic forward and back folds that mimic the shape of an accordion or a paper fan. This will create the spacing between panels and the tunnel effect. I'm drawing out eight rectangles that are one inch wide and the same height as my panels. However many panels you'll have, you'll want to make twice as many of these rectangles, and I have four panels. But once I tried these out, I decided one inch was too thick for the width, so I turned it into a half inch instead. It actually worked out pretty well though, because I need two of these accordion fold sheets, one for each side of the book. And here is where my process differs from the PDF instructions if you're referencing those. Except for the very back ones, I'm cutting out little tabs in the middle of each fold that I will glue my panels to. This is to keep them laying flat and to let more light into the structure, but you can also glue the panels directly onto the accordion fold.
I also made a fourth panel, which is the little butterflies flying around and making the scene a bit more magical. These were finicky because I made them really small, but I was able to attach them to some clear twine and set them up on their own little strip of paper. And this is the layer that will be between the background and me. Finally, I was able to put everything together with the earnest application of some double-sided tape. The middle panels are attached to the tabs I cut out earlier, and the front one goes directly onto the front fold. Not gonna lie, it was very satisfying to see it all come together. With love, Anatraxia.